Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. Uh, serving the entire New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Tri-State area to make sure your home can stand up to adverse weather. And we may get some at the end of this week and into the weekend. And, of course, uh, they've got uh, everything you need with respect to winter time. Uh, for snow and ice removal, Long Island's largest rock salt source, 631-756-1125. The best prices not only in town, but anywhere. OmniTrueValue.com is the website. We are, of course, uh, going to be focusing our attention on uh, tropical st- subtropical storm Nicole, uh, which you can see it there out in the Atlantic. Now, you look at the satellite picture and you say, this really doesn't look... Uh, like most tropical storms, and that is indeed the case, which is why it's being classified as subtropical, at least for the moment. Uh, That is probably going to change over time as the system becomes more tropical. Here's a close-up view of Nicole, and if you take a look, I'm going to see if I can get this centered a bit better, Uh, but right in there, in, in, in the middle of this elongated stretch of clouds you can see that there's a low level circulation swirling about and moving toward the west all this cloud cover that goes well to the north and extends well to the south so again it doesn't have that sort of classic look of a tropical system yet but uh, it is going to eventually as it's moving north northwestward it's going to turn toward the west and then maybe even to the southwest And ultimately, uh, we're looking at a system that is going to become more tropical with time, possibly even strengthening into a a minimal hurricane before it heads for landfall somewhere along the South Florida coast. And that will come along probably late Wednesday night or on Thursday. And uh, just to run you through, at least with respect to what's going on as of 1030 a.m. Eastern time, uh, reconnaissance aircraft is sir, is uh, is uh, going in there now to uh, take a look and see what's happening. Uh, you can see initial wind at flight levels being re- flight level being reported between 40 and 45 knots, which is fairly consistent uh, with the uh, advisory from the Hurricane Center. The uh, 10 a.m. advisory uh, on Nicole uh, <clears throat> bring up uh, their forecast here from the Hurricane Center. Uh, it is at 26.3 north, 69.6 west, and the top winds 45 miles per hour, moving northwest at 9. Now, we have hurricane watches that are now up for the Bahamas. Uh, for the Florida east coast, we now have hurricane watches up, and those watches extend pretty far to the north, uh, up the coast, with tropical storm watches that go further north uh, toward the southeast coast of uh, to the, the southeast coast of Georgia. So uh, we're talking about a rather large area where wind is going to be an issue, and I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, the intensity model guidance strengthening this uh, to at least a strong tropical storm. We have a few models bringing it up to minimal hurricane before landfall. And just a, a, a look at what some of the models are doing. Uh, the, da- the dark black line, this is the average track of the GFS ensembles, uh, number of model, GFS uh, variations of the model, uh, and you come up with an average position, and you see the ultimate track is take it across Florida, a brief time in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and then a sharp turn to the northeast through the Carolinas, and then offshore, uh, passing south and east of New Jersey. Now, uh, the track of the center is uh, the is what we're talking about here. But there will be impacts with this, I think, ultimately to the west. So these are the actual hurricane tracking models that we have so far. We're kind of early in the game here uh, with respect to what's going to be happening uh, over the longer haul with Nicole. And I have a couple of models here I want to show you uh, with uh, with Nicole and what's happening elsewhere in the eastern part of the United States. We've got uh, a cold front that's moved on through, a big high building in, a very large high is going to move across the Great Lakes and into upstate New York and New England. And you'll notice a lot of isobars here uh, running down from to the Delmarva Peninsula right down through the Carolinas and into Florida. There is going to be a very, very tight pressure gradient setting up 
uh, in this zone. Uh, and that's going to mean for several days of winds coming in from off the ocean. So tidal flooding, particularly with this full moon that's coming tomorrow, uh, uh, overnight into tomorrow morning, we've got a full moon. Uh, the peak tides will probably be along, say, late Wednesday into early Thursday. So we could have a serious coastal flooding situation here, regardless of what happens with the coal. And as long as it maintains a certain amount of strength, uh, that's going to play out. And you can see on the NAM that it starts to get more of a tropical look over time uh, as it heads towards the uh, South Florida coast that makes a landfall, briefly comes out the other side, and then this is as far as the NAM model goes. So now I'm going to take you on the, um, on the GFS uh, because from here what we're going to see is a strong cold front that is out to the west. Uh, that uh, is from a storm that is going to be heading up into uh, east central Canada. The snows up through the Dakotas in northern Minnesota. Here's the coal. And as this system pushes eastward, it's going to pick the coal up and take it on that track to the northeast. And then the question becomes, at what point does it go from being tropical to, say, post-tropical? And ultimately, I think it's going to mean for what could be a significant rainfall here coming late Friday, Friday night, and on Saturday. There's Nicole. Models were a little slower, or at least the GFS was, in taking this out to the northeast. The European is further west, which would imply maybe a more robust rainfall here Friday night into Saturday evening. Uh, the uh, rainfall amounts that are being generated by the models, for example. So you've got the white, whitish area is the uh, edge of about two inches of rain and you see the darker purples that are further offshore this again with the furthest east gfs uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, european uh, from overnight which uh, goes out far enough and we'll take a look at its rainfall forecast and their amounts actually are more substantial and further to the west so ultimately how this tracks uh, is going to uh, decide what we're going to get out of this. And it may, may take a little while uh, for us to figure that out. You can see what's happening with the upper air here. Uh, the uh, storm is basically tucked in underneath an upper high that is in the southeast and Gulf states. That's cause, that will cause it to move west toward Florida. And then the ridge breaks down and that western system comes in, lifts it up and just kind of kicks it away to the northeast. Uh, and then after that, the pattern is going to turn rather cold uh, in the longer term. And that's something we, uh, we discussed yesterday on the Joe and Joe Weather Show. This is the uh, recent 8 to 14 day outlook from the Hurricane Center. And you don't really see this too often. We're about well over 95% of the United States showing uh, below normal temperatures. So uh, this is a very, very robust cold pattern change that we're going to get into. And we will certainly talk about that more. In the meantime, as far as the day-to-day -day weather is concerned, uh, we don't have uh, any major issues other than the fact that it is going to turn much cooler. We can say goodbye to these record highs as this next big high just builds on in. Uh, so from today's last day of temperatures reaching up into the 70s and maybe setting some records, tomorrow and Wednesday not getting out of the 50s during the day, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning we probably will see 20s inland and 30s uh, along coastal sections and warmer urban areas. The weather should be nice, though, at least through Thursday before we start to deal with uh, the moisture from the coal and that coal front uh, coming up uh, from the west. So uh, keep paying attention to uh, forecasts going forward, of course, with all of that, all of uh, with all, all this going on. Weather in five brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware, 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. Telephone number is 631-756-1125 for the best prices in town. OmniTrueValue.com is the website. So tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show, with regards to that full moon, there's also a total lunar eclipse, and Joe's going to uh, do a little presentation about how that works and what that all means. Plus, of course, we will have the latest on subtropical storm Nicole as it heads uh, to, the west, to the west toward Florida and our local weather, and we'll look at the long range. So we'll see you tonight. That's at 7.35 Eastern time.